this is a start of a very special reading block that I'm definitely plagiarizing from uh, Mara from Books Like Well. She did like cats choose my TBR kind of video, but she made it into a reading vlog that's also a competition between the two cats. <laughs> This sounds so silly, but like, I love it. She made two of those kind of videos. I will link both of them down in the description. And I find the idea to be like super cute and fun. I was like, I have two cats, let's do this. So basically, I have chosen eight books and out of those eight books, four will be chosen by my cats. Each cat will choose two books. I will put treats on each book. Yeah and they will choose the books for me. I don't want to get too into how well it will look like. Uh, you will see it in a second. But let me first uh, very briefly introduce the books that I've chosen for this challenge reading vlog. <laughs> first we have Hamlet by Maggie O'Farrell, which is a book about uh, Shakespeare. It's set in the 1596. Shakespeare and his wife Agnes had three children at that time, I think. Twins and some other kid. And one of the twins was called Hamlet and I do know that he died from some kind of plague, I'm not sure. And I think this book focuses on that time when he got sick and later died. And uh, aside from Shakespeare, this will focus also on his wife Agnes and darker grief. And a few years after his son's death, he wrote the play Hamlet. So I'm guessing he was somehow inspired. There's not much known about the time in his life, so I'm guessing this is just... I don't know what to call it, like reimagining, like what could have happened is not necessarily based on facts. Then we have, oh I don't know how to say his name, Do John Winham. <laughs> the Day of the Truth, it's, uh, I think it's about a guy who was in hospital with like some kind of uh, wounds to his eyes, so he had bandages over his eyes while there was a meteor, meteor, meteor. <laughs> I will put the uh, expression on the screen, and people who saw it went blind and because he had bandages over his uh, eyes he didn't lose his sight and it's it's kind of like a post-apocalyptic kind of novel he I think finds some other people who also didn't lose their sight uh, during this event yeah we go from there we have If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha which I think is kind of like a slice of life novel from South Korea about those four women who live in the same building complex and yeah it's about their life and I do think it's also about beauty standards because it's called If, if I Had Your Face. We have If On A Winter's Night A Traveler by Itala Calvino. This is a very weird book because it's very meta. I do think the author kind of writes this book knowing He's writing this book, kind of addressing it to you as a reader, so the first uh, kind of few sentences are You are about to begin reading Italo Calvino's new novel If on a winter's night a traveler, relax, concentrate, spell every other thought, let the world around you fade So, my friend gifted this book to me last year for my birthday and she said uh, all of my books are depressing and she wanted to add a book that's actually fun to my bookshelf, so Thank you, Marta. We have the performance by Claire Thomas, which is uh, a very new addition to my collection. I thought this was about three actresses who are playing in this play called Happy Days by Beckett. But it's actually about three women who go to see that play. So one night three women go to the theater to see a play. And I know Matthew Sharapa. I really love this novel and yeah. It sounded right up my alley. We have English Animals by Laura Kay. I think it's about this young woman who goes to the countryside to work for this couple. And I think she's uh, for this English couple, so... Uh, and she's not from England. This book was very popular a few years ago on Booktube. And uh, it's been on my bookshelf for far too many years. <laughs> we have The Pursuit of Love by Nancy Mitford. How was this written? I don't actually know anything about this book. I do know it's very satirical. Okay, it was written... Uh, it was published in 1945. So we have that. <laughs> Uh, quite a lot of modern classics. And we have Stoner by John Williams, which is about a college professor that's uh, very unsatisfied with his life. I think he cheats on his wife. <laughs> Fun. Okay, so let's get the treats and see what the cats will choose. Okay, I should tell you very quickly about my cats. I have two cats. Uh, one is named Mila, uh, the other one is named Flora. They're siblings, uh, brother and sister, and we got them a few months ago from a shelter. They're about six months old right now. Mila is very kind of adventurous and 
bald and he loves food so I'm kind of I'm very worried about this challenge because I'm worried he's going to eat all the treats uh, before Flora will even get to them. Uh, Flora is a lot more shy and anxious and kind of jumpy. She she tends to, if she's not in the mood, she will like immediately run away if you try to pet her. She's kind of moody, like if she does not want to be touched or like carried, like she will immediately run away. And I would like to say that uh, I'm her favorite. I understand her the most and she likes me the best. Okay, so let's do this. So, Milo has chosen the day of the triffids and English animals, I have to say, bold choices. And Flora has chosen if I had your face and if on the winter's night a traveler, both with ifs. And both of them actually have chosen one modern book and one modern classic. I literally have no idea which one will win. No guesses, really. <laughs> so, let's start the reading vlog. Saturday. It is the weekend, so I want to do some reading. But so far I have read about half of The Day of the Triffids. Um, I've been listening to uh, this one on audiobook, it's on YouTube, and I've been painting, I mean painting, I'm doing this thing um, that's called Paint by Numbers, because I'm like really bad. Oh, sorry about the glare on my glasses. Because I'm like really bad at like 
art stuff, so... And even though I'm not very good at it, uh, I find it fun, so... I read about 150 pages of uh, The Day of the Triffids, and... At first I was really enjoying it, but the further I got, the more angry it uh, has made me. There's quite a lot of misogyny, but also the approach to disability, so blindness specifically, is just horrifying. I will delve into more details and like spoilery things later. Uh, after I finished this book. But yeah, male white science fiction writers from the 20th century, like, I'm starting to wonder if they ever, like, met a woman <laughs> in their entire lives. Okay, it's fine. But yeah, we'll see where it goes so far. Like, I sometimes I would paint and, like, have to stop painting to, like, digest <laughs> what I just heard. But yeah. So far it is in the territory of a one star and I don't give out one stars often, but things that make me angry, they are definitely contenders for one star. That was uh, Mila's pick and this is Flora's pick, so if I hit your face, I only got like 30 pages into it, so I can't say... I can't tell you much about it, but I'm enjoying it. It's not very very literary, it's more like general fiction, and I don't mean it like as a bad thing, uh, it's just very easy to read, and it's definitely like a slice of life kind of book, and I'm very much enjoying it. I will paint some more and listen more to the audiobook of The Day of the Triffids, and when I finish it I will tell you my final thoughts. But first let me show you my cats. This is the progress that I've made so far. I'm not very good at painting, but I think, I feel like from far away it looks okay. Okay, hello. It is um, a little bit over a week since my last update. The thing is, on the day of my last update I actually finished the day of the Triffids, but I just needed some time to process what I have read. I also, hold on, I am also actually a little bit over halfway through if I hit your face, uh, but I will talk about it a little bit later. I would like to focus on this book, so I think in the end I'm not going to give it one star. Yeah, I think I think it's two star. Let's talk about some things that didn't work for me and like two small things that made me change my mind and not give this book one star but two stars. So I still didn't enjoy it, but there are some things that I feel like saved this book for me a little bit. <laughs> I think I will talk about some spoilers, but I will warn you beforehand. So first let's uh, like review this quickly without any spoilers. So everything I said before stands um, very ableist, uh, misogynistic, Yep, it's kind of premise-wise. We start at a hospital with the main character, I don't even remember his name. Uh, he wakes up from some kind of... He had a surgery a few days before, something like that, and um, since the surgery he had bandages over his eyes, and the day before there was a... I don't remember how to pronounce that word, but that shower, and after he wakes up the next day, and it is the day where when the bandages were supposed to be removed, uh, but no one like came to his room. And slowly he finds out that every single person that watched the meteor meteor <laughs> shower uh, went blind. So even on the first page, this whole thing is described as the end of the world. It actually says. The way I came to miss the end of the world, well, the end of the world I had known for close on 30 years, was sheer accident. So I do have some conflicted feelings, because it is considered kind of a catastrophe, and blindness is considered a catastrophe, but um, that's not the only problem I have with how blindness is portrayed. Like, even in the first chapter, and that's what kind of made me a bit apprehensive, was in the first chapter the main character after like he encounters encounters some people at the hospital, he gets up gets out of the hospital, starts like seeing what's happening in the streets, and 
he walks into a bar and there's a guy there who is drinking and is, he's quite drunk and on his way there he actually sees some people committing suicide and there's quite a few mentions of suicide uh, at least in the first half of the book and I was a bit confused because like why on day one like you went blind and you're like okay I have to kill myself like why suddenly leaving blind is somehow worse than death like what I don't I don't get it and blind people in the book are portrayed as very helpless and to the point where like they're barely people at this point some people I mean the whole book is about like what do we do from now and how do we what do we do with the blind people <laughs> basically uh, which is very patronizing I have to say but some people like consider blind people as like waste and like we shouldn't even care about them and care whether they live or die but my conflicted feelings come from the fact that maybe those are, were not the intentions of the author, even though I still find that problematic. Like, he wasn't talking about blindness as a disability, just what do we do when like 95% of the people go blind suddenly one day? Like, the consequences of that, you know, uh, a person goes blind, he can't go to work, he can't... So like, there's no power. People can drive, you know, like those kind of things. So it's not blindness itself, it's kind of the consequences of the fact that most people suddenly went blind. And I found this, <laughs> this is a bit excessive, but I found this master's thesis called Countries of the Blind, Blindness and the Cre Creation of Other Worlds. In the country of the blind, the black grip, gripe, grip, gripe, <laughs> and the day of the Triffids by N Andy C.R. Puhanan. I'm sorry, I will uh, link the thesis in the description. And there are two quotes that I would like to share with you. One is, the disaster is predominantly the collapse of society rather than specifically blindness. And that's what uh, I was talking about just now. And another quote that I found interesting. Throughout the novel, blindness is not viewed in isolation or on a predominantly individual level, but in terms of a series of complex and often contradictory interactions and associations with the changing structure of the society. So, even though it's like a sci-fi post-apocalyptic kind of novel with uh, <laughs> triffids, which I didn't even mention yet. So triffids are like those plants that are, what do you call it, car, 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 like they eat meat, eat, like want to kill people basically. Like hearing that, you would think this novel would focus on like how do we survive if those like being blind well are those plants wanting to kill us. But first of all, those plants do not pose a threat at the beginning, only after some time passes. The characters notice that the plants are dangerous to them and this book isn't actually about the action, so like fighting with the triffids and they actually don't play a big role in this book, surprisingly, but it's rather how we kind of rebuilt society after this kind of apocalyptic event. Sorry if the angle changed, uh, I had to take a break. So, yeah, like I said, it's not really about the action. The main character kind of leaves London uh, because like big cities are actually quite dangerous and we kind of follow him while he encounters different groups of people who have different structures, like organize themselves di themselves differently and have different ideologies. Ideologies? I don't know. <laughs> so we have people who are like fuck blind people, I don't care if they die. Uh, they have people who are like, okay, we're going to assign, because there are, aside from the, our main character, the, that there are other people who actually can see. They're in the minority, but uh, they exist. So there are other people who are like, okay, we are going to assign this uh, many blind people one seeing person and they will like help them and they will like find food, fight with the triffids, uh, etc. So yeah, there's a lot of different systems and this is what this book actually explores. Which is interesting, but a lot of it is so like patronizing to blind people and like the blind people are never kind of in the discussion like what we should do is just the seeing people being like, okay, so what do we do about them? And I find that problematic. I do. I do. There's actually this book, Nothing About Us Without Us, which is, um, I think this kind of slogan came from the disability activist movement. 
And yeah, whether or not it was the intention of the author to portray blind people like that. Like whether or not we're talking about blindness as a disability or like blindness as this like cos consequence of like a catastrophe and like most people are blind and like the people people who see are in the minority, so like, I understand this like power. So like, I understand this is different, this is a different world, but I still just don't like what the author is saying. I don't like what he implies. Yeah, that blind people are just useless. Uh, although, like I said, I'm conflicted because like, kind of spoilers, in the end, the ending is kind of hopeful and it does, I feel, show a hint of like, a world where everyone adapts and blind people too and they because this book kind of spans throughout a few years and blind people are more and more capable <laughs> I don't know but like it's more they're like capable to provide to like like they adapt but the hopeful ending is more like they can be helpful to the society but it's not like can, they can live on their own they can live fulfilling happy lives it's just like they adapted and now they can be useful for the, to the society. So yeah, I need to attend to an urgent matter, but, matter, but uh, <laughs> I will finish uh, my... Okay, sorry, I'm just, I'm on a lunch break, so <laughs> I'm a little bit in a hurry, but quickly what I liked. Some of it might be spoilers, but I will warn you. So it can be said that this book is about ecology and like nature and how we as humanity use nature for our profit because of the Triffids and what kind of the Triffids symbolize. So the Triffids, uh, I think they were a little bit f fuzzy on the details, but I think they were kind of man-made, like humans made them and they produced some kind of oil and yeah, we started using them and I, I found this somewhere that uh, the Triffids can symbolize like kind of corporate greed and how we kind of use nature for our profit without considering the consequences. And that's very interesting in my opinion. I do remember there being kind of an acknowledgement uh, in the text, I don't have a quote, but it was somewhere in the text, this kind of acknowledgement that we kind of brought it upon ourselves. I liked that, uh, but also there is kind of... Uh, <laughs> the main character implies quite a few times in the text that somehow the Russians were on it too, and like the Triffids attacking us and the meteor shower, like somehow the Russians went on it, the Soviets. <laughs> But um, I do think it's kind of a kind of post-Cold War paranoia kind of thing. But I also read, I think on Wikipedia, that uh, some critics said that the Triffids were symbolizing or some t somehow implying, what, what is the word I'm looking for? But like, it was about like post-colonialism. And like, I didn't see it, but maybe I just like brain cells, so I don't know. So yeah, I don't know, man. I'm still kind of torn between one star and two stars because one stars made me angry and this book did make me make me angry. Two stars are books I didn't like, but I can find some things that I liked about the book. And this book is kind of both. <laughs> so, okay, I will talk to you about if I had your face later after I finish it. So, see you next time. <laughs> okay, so I finished If I Had Your Face by Francis Cha and I really enjoyed it. I think I will end up giving it four stars. To give you a little bit of a better, better synopsis, this book is about four women, four young women who live in South Korea. In the present day uh, they all live in the same kind of apartment co complex, so their kind of social economic situation is similar or the, the backgrounds are similar. Some of them actually went to the same orphanage, so they're not very well off. There's Ara, who is mute because of an accident in the past. She is a hairstylist and <laughs> she's obsessed with a K-pop band. <laughs> we also find out uh, a little bit more about her friend Sujin, but she doesn't get a perspective, so I'm not counting her. The second one would be Cutie, who is a room salon girl who had a lot of like plastic surgery done, a lot of like cosmetic procedures, and she I think is my favorite character in the book. There is Miha, who is an artist, she also uh, came from an orphanage. She, she went to an orphanage with Ara and Sujin, but she was very talented. She was an artist and uh, she actually went to study 
art in New York uh, on a scholarship. And now she has a very rich boyfriend and their dynamic was very interesting. And the fourth character is Wana, Wana, I think. And she was the least interesting one. Uh, she's a little bit older than the other girls and she... <laughs> Yeah, her, her whole personality is that she's pregnant. <laughs> this is, like I said, a very much like a slice of life kind of book. And that has its advantages and disadvantages because we get like a glimpse into each of the characters' life. But because it was just a glimpse, at each story in the end, in my opinion, felt a little bit unfinished. And some of... Th there's a lot of topics that this book talks about. Yeah beauty standards, um, plastic surgery, prostitution, classism, misogyny in Korea. Yeah, a lot of things and I wish we got a little bit more. I wish we delved a little bit deeper and had more time with each of the characters because this book is only like 260 something pages. So not long at all. I wish it was longer. I did really enjoy it. So it's not like it's not like I I thought that the characters were I don't know one dimensional. That the topics that it talked about were like very rushed at very kind of surface level. No, I just I just wanted more. Like the, the, this book had potential to be a five star, but in the end it was a four star. But I really really enjoyed this book. I thought it was interesting how. In the end, we kind of focused on these girls' friendship. Um, they get to know each other throughout the novel more and more and start to rely on each other and, yeah, just grow and support one another. I thought that the characters weren't stereotypes. Like, after each chapter with uh, each of the characters, I thought I knew them and there were chapters where the characters surprised me in a good way, like they weren't stereotypes and they had their unique interests, uh, quirks and not necessarily things that would like contradict things that were said about them in the past but like make me understand them more and their depth and and how people are just complicated. So yeah, four stars. Uh, I don't have it with me, by, but I also started English Animals. I don't know what to think yet. I'm like, I don't know, 30 pages in. And there's a lot more description of taxidermy than I thought there would be. So I am... Uh, I kind of wanted to DNF it because I am a bit squimish. But uh, I think I'm going to fight through it and continue. We'll see. And English Animals was... I think Mila's pick. Yes? I think so. <laughs> and from the future will correct me if I'm wrong. Okay, so that's the end of the update. Okay, hello. Just wanted to quickly update you that I have found an audiobook of If On A Winter's Night Traveler because I had some problems with it. Every time I found this audiobook somewhere it said like it's not available in my country. So there were some steps I had to take. And finally I have the audiobook. It works. and. I just, I don't know, I, I heard a sample on Audible and I was like, you know what, I don't want to read the physical copy, I really like the audiobook. And yeah, so far I'm quite enjoying it. It's very weird, very... like it's kind of a story within a story and normally I feel like I wouldn't like that. Also, sorry about um, the water noises, I'm not sure if you can hear it, but there's a cat fountain in the back right here. So, yeah, it's like a story within a story, there's normally... I feel like I wouldn't really like, but because it's like very conscious and like self-realized and like kind of meta, I think I like it. I'm still not quite sure. Also, this is the progress. Yeah, I think I might be able to finish this painting while listening to If On A Winter's Night, A Traveler. I actually listened to quite a few audiobooks while painting this. It's taking quite a long time, I'm not gonna lie. It's like been, it's been over a month of me working on it. Not every day, but still, it's a lot. Okay, so let's get reading.
So I finished Italo Calvinas, If on a Winter's Night a Traveler, and I quite enjoyed it. I didn't really tell you much about the premise, but it's kind of hard to because it's so weird. So I think I'm going to read the back of the book, which I don't do often. Okay, so you go into a bookshop and buy If on a Winter's Night a Traveler by Italo Calvina. You like it, but there's a printer's error in your copy. You take it back to the shop and get a replacement, but the replacement seems to be a totally different story. You try to track down the original book you were reading, but end up with a different narrative again. This remarkable novel leads you through many different books, including a detective adventure, a romance, a satire, an erotic story, a diary, and a quest. But the hero of them all is you, the reader. So basically, yeah, there's ten different stories that are connected with the narrative of you trying to find the rest of the stories that you have read so far. <laughs> Sounds complicated, but actually it's not that complicated. It's really a book about reading and it's a book for readers, for writers, authors and just lovers of books, I think. And it definitely kind of addresses the relationship between readers and authors and their kind of expectations of each other. Yeah, very meta. <laughs> and yeah, like it said on the back of the book, uh, each story is different, not only like different characters and environment, but also each story has is kind of a different genre and has a a bit of a different writing style. So it's very clever and I think you have to be a very skillful writer to pull this off and I do think Italo Calvino did pull this off. Here's the thing, I think it's weird, it's wacky and kind of experimental but not in a postmodern, pretentious, with a sprinkle of magical real realism kind of way, which I don't like, but more in a meta self-aware kind of way, which I personally prefer. It did get a little bit boring in the mid middle for me, since I knew there was no point getting involved in the story, because I would never get an ending, you know? Uh, we would never figure out where things went. Because, yeah, you only get the beginning. And it did get repetitive around the middle, but then, after a while, I get interested in in it again. Oh, I forgot my mic. Sorry, I hope to, I, I hope you can hear me well, or well enough at least. <laughs> also, I think it's better to read this book in a shorter kind of span of time, amount, amount of time, because I put this down, put this book down for a while, and I think it would be better if I just read it in like a day or two on it, or in a few days, not like two or three weeks. So, all in all, it's weird and sometimes confusing, but I would say it's still quite fun and I would recommend it personally. Yeah, it's a very unique story, I have to say that. And sometimes I felt like it's a book that I, that I kind of appreciate the themes, or like what it's trying to do more than like I actually just enjoyed reading it. Does that make sense? I like the ideas even though I didn't always enjoy reading this book. Because some of the stories were like, just, it was a lot of different genres, so not every single story was interesting to me. Oh, uh, so, to summarize, I still enjoyed it and in the end I decided to give it four stars. So, there's one more book, but I think I will wrap this vlog up tomorrow and you'll see who won. Okay, it is finally time to wrap this vlog up. <laughs> the results are in. I... <laughs> into that DNFing English animals. Not only because of the taxidermy, the writing style, just... I didn't really like it. I found the main character... She was from Slovakia and I found her narrative to be very simplistic and I've read some reviews saying that it was a conscious choice because she's a foreigner, but like that doesn't make sense. Why would her kind of inner monologue be simplistic, I understand her dialogue, but the narration, I don't know. It's not like the worst book I have ever read, it just wasn't my cup of tea, and I know in the end I think it would be a book that I would write about three stars. So I've decided not to torture myself because I thought, because at first I thought, no, I'm doing this challenge, I should like pull through. But then I thought if I was watching someone else like struggling with a book uh, while doing like a reading vlog, reading challenge, I would absolutely be all for them DNFing it. So why can't I be this kind to myself? Like, you know what I mean? Like I have those like ridiculous expectations of myself and I'm just, I'm letting it go. 
So I'm not sure how to like count this because it's a DNF, but I'm gonna assume it would be a three star. So in the end, when it comes to Mila Speaks, the first book got two stars, the second book got three stars, so the average is 2.5 stars. And both of Flora Speaks got four stars, so her average is 4.0. So <laughs> 4.0 versus 2.5. Uh, we have a clear winner. If I were to rank all of those books, not surprisingly, this would be the lowest than English Animals. Then I think actually I would put If on a Winter's Night a Traveler, even though it's also a four star, just like If I Had Your Face, but I think I enjoyed If I Had Your Face a little bit more, because it definitely had potential to be a four star, I just wanted it to delve a little bit deeper. deeper. But yeah, really enjoyed it. It's time to let the winner know that they won this challenge and give them their reward. I have to lock uh, Milo up. <laughs> I mean, like, out of this room while I'm giving the rewards to Flora. Because he would go insane if he saw, like, that she was getting a snack and he wasn't. So, let's do it. Okay, sorry you have been sleeping the whole day. <laughs> yes, you. I just wanted to tell you that you are a loser of this challenge and you don't really care, that's fine. I'm not gonna lie, it feels like you didn't even try. <laughs> you sleep here and I will give treats to Flora in the kitchen. <laughs> Hello, congratulations on winning the challenge. I have some treats for you. And the last one. Yes, yes, yes. Ooh, what's she doing? <laughs> last one. Yes, congratulations. Okay, this is the end. Uh, thank you if you watched the whole thing. I know this vlog turned out to be very long, so hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time. Bye!